Hello, I hope this vlog finds you doing well today and happy Purim Sameach. Purim or Purim is the fast of Esther and this is where we remember what Esther did for her people. This is not a commanded holiday, but man is it a fun one. And for many of you, you may not have heard of it before. So let's just quickly get into it. And I want to do a shout out to my daughter, Alethea. Purim is her favorite holiday and I'm really missing you and uh, missing celebrating with you today. But I hope that you're having a happy holiday and most importantly, just remembering that God is faithful to his people. I had the wonderful blessing of getting to hang out with Sweet Jubilee yesterday. I got to go hang out with Danielle and Jubilee while she's recovering. Love you, friend. And Jubilee and I got to make some hamantaschen, which was so fun. Um, I've made hamantaschen with Danielle and my kids almost every year for Purim. Shout out to Becca. She's the one who originally taught us how to make it. Um, just all of my Israeli friends, I hope you're having a beautiful holiday. And for everyone that celebrates or doesn't celebrate, I hope you're having a great day. So most people have probably read the story of Esther in the Bible. And if you haven't, you need to go home and read it. It's a short book and it's such a powerful book. Um, especially, I think women are very encouraged by the way that Esther is used by God in a powerful way, but the power is actually brought in with gentleness and with faithfulness and with going low. And isn't that so true of, of how the Holy Spirit usually works in us? So I'm going to briefly go over the story of Esther with you, but again, do your homework and go read that book. And even if you've read it before, Come on, over the next few days, you know, we we remember what Esther did for three days because she fasted for three days. So it's just a, a contemplative time and some people are really partying. They're, they're dressing up and they're having good food and they're retelling the story and remembering God's faithfulness. So however you do that, I hope that you're blessed. At a party, King Ahuserus demanded that his wife Vashti present herself naked in front of his guests. Now, that is from the, I'm probably going to say it wrong, the Mishra or Mishpa, I don't, I don't know how you say it. That is a Jewish book. So, the Bible actually doesn't say that she had to be presented naked. So, she didn't want to come. We know that scripture tells us she was told to come and wear her royal crown. So I have heard a lot of Gentile Bible teachers say that it was political why she didn't want to come. And then I have read that a lot of Jewish Bible scholars say that when you break it down that she was being asked to come naked. But when I look at scripture, I really don't see a lot of information. Now, that could be my lack of understanding. I'm not a Hebrew scholar, um, and I'm not a biblical scholar. I mean, I wish I was. But anyway, it, it says what it says. It says that she was asked to come with her royal crown, and she refused. So I don't know exactly why she refused. I don't know if she did the right thing by refusing, the wrong thing. So I'll leave that to you to kind of sift out. You know, there are just some things... Uh, in the Bible that we just don't have the answers to. But we know that God uses the situation. So whether or not she was asked to come before the king naked, I do not know. Scripture does not say that. But it says she refused to, and he was advised to execute her. So he, he did send her away. So he was in search of a new queen. A search began in a Jewish girl named Hadassah, but you probably know her as Esther. Funny side note, I almost named my youngest child Hadassah. That was, that was the name that I had picked out, and then I, um, I really felt like her name was supposed to be double portion of grace. And that's a story for another time. 
So Esther was selected to be queen. Now Esther had to keep her Jewish identity hidden, which is a part of the reason why a lot of Jewish people dress up at Purim. So when Haman was promoted to a higher rank, everyone was forced to bow down to him. He wore an idol, an, excuse me, an idol around his neck, and Mordecai the Jew, who was Esther's uncle, refused to bow down. This infuriated Haman, and then he then proposed a decree that would wipe out the Jewish people. To set a date for the decree, he pulled out lots in Hebrew, which means Purim. And it landed on the 13th of Adar. Soon the decree was sent all over the kingdom, notifying the populations that on that day, all of the Jewish people would be wiped out. And this is when we commemorate Purim. Mordecai heard about the decree and told Esther that this is perhaps why she was put in this position of power. And as my shirt says, perhaps you were born for such a time as this. That's what scripture says. My daughter Alethea got this for me. The fate of her people was in her hands. She had to speak to the king. Knowing that she could be killed for approaching the king unsummoned, she still agreed. She asked Mordecai to tell the Jewish people to pray and fast for three days. And after the three days, she would approach the king. After three days, she approached the king and requested that he and Haman come to a dinner party she had prepared for them. At the dinner, she requested a second dinner where she would make her request. Haman left in high spirits only to see Mordecai on the street, making him outraged again. That night, he began building gallows to have him hanged on. At the second dinner, Esther told the king that someone is out to kill her and her people, and that someone is Haman. The king was enraged and had Haman hanged on the very gallows that he had built for Mordecai. Meanwhile, Mordecai received the high-ranking job that Haman had. Yet the decree to have all of the Jewish people killed was already in motion and all of the provinces were all ready to do so on the 13th of Adar. So Mordecai and Esther passed a new decree. Jewish people were allowed to defend themselves on the 13th. When the day arrived, Jewish people organized and defended themselves and survived. The next day, the 14th, was full of celebration. And so that too is, is a part of what we're remembering during this three-day celebration. As a result of everything that had occurred, Mordecai and Esther recognized that this entire saga had been filled with miracles from God. So though this book never says outright God's name, it doesn't say yod heh vav -Hey or Yahweh or any of the language that we see in most of the First Testament, this book eludes to God in such a powerful way and I believe it was done on purpose and for a purpose so often when we're talking and when we're interacting with each other we don't even say the name God but the mere expression of the conversation is what is conveyed is just as powerful because God is whether we say his name or not and I think that he was showing that us that here in this story, that he is God, whether his name is said or not said. So Jewish people in every generation everywhere commem commemorate these days as a holiday called Purim, meaning lots, since lots were cast to see what day they would be exterminated. Mordecai and Esther chose to write down the entire story of Purim without outwardly mentioning God's name because at no point during the event of Purim were the miracles out in the open. So that is just a little excerpt about the story of Esther, but it just doesn't give it justice. Please read it in the Bible. And this is just one of those stories that you want to retell over and over and over again because it's such a perfect picture of Messiah being sent before us, right? It's such a picture of us following 
Messiah's path and, and being servants and being willing to lay our life down. And it's once again showing God's faithfulness to his people. And we know if he's faithful to his people, he's faithful to his children. He's faithful to all of us. It really gives me courage and it opens my heart to the fact that I really need Holy Spirit in each situation to tell me how to approach it. And a little, a little side tidbit, not biblical, just something that I'll throw out there is the, in the redemptive gifts, it says that they believe that Esther was redemptive gift servant. And so for those of you who are really into the redemptive gifts, you'll find that interesting. And I think one of the reasons that they believe that she was redemptive gift servant is because servants are so into the practicality of things and they're willing to do things that don't make sense to a lot of um, the other gifts. And so I can see how Esther was willing to even be married to someone without telling him who she truly was and everything you know that she did you know she wasn't his first wife and we don't know all of the dynamics that are going on but she really had to die to herself and she was doing it in such a sacrificial way in a way that really comes so naturally to servants, but not that it should be dismissed. It's something that we all need to incorporate into our lives. And the way that she was willing to lay her life down for her people, you know, it's no small thing that she was willing to go to the king without being summoned. Kings had a scepter, and when you came into the court without being summoned, you really could be killed. But he did, he put his scepter out to her, is what scripture tells us. She was so brave and she did it with such humility, not being showy, not making it about herself. She said, if I perish, I perish. I mean, she really was willing to put it all out on the line. And she found favor with the king because of that. And he is the one who decided to put his hand out and, and to reach back out to her and so I really think there's a lesson here. There's really a lot here to unpack that we need to um, really think about and, and see how God can incorporate that servant spirit, that servant mindset into our lives to really affect change around us in more practical ways, in more humble ways. Because servants are just not about the spotlight. They're about making a place for other people and S Queen Esther really um, embodies that better than almost anyone in the Bible but obviously not better than Yeshua so I hope that you have a beautiful rest of your day I hope that you enjoy the rest of this holiday and I will talk to you again soon bye